Hey, everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I am going to get us going live on Facebook as well. As you're coming in, just drop where you're coming from today. Share your name, where you're watching from this morning or this afternoon. Super grateful to have you here uh, on this Tuesday. Hope you had an amazing weekend. Uh, super thrilled that you're joining us for a little conversation about purposeful people. It looks like we are just about live. Ooh. Here we go. There we go. Hold on just one second. Here we go. Go live. We're going live. Monica coming in from Katie. We got people coming in from Texas. Ooh, a lot of Texas people. People coming in from Maryland. That's awesome. Sherry, we met at the uh, counselors conference. Glad you're here. Carrie coming in from Colorado. Oh, that's awesome. Iowa's in the building. Sumner, Washington, our people, people coming in from Wisconsin. Wow, people coming in everywhere. That's so exciting. Thanks for showing up today. Uh, Denise coming in from San Diego, just south of me. Folks coming in from Massachusetts. Hi, Terry. Welcome. We got North Carolina in the building. <laughs> so exciting. Oh, I always love seeing people. The range of people and humans where they're, where they're rolling in from. We got like 200 people live here today. That's incredible. So grateful that you're showing up. Hi from Chicago. People coming in from uh, Tri-Cities, Washington. Forks, Washington. You guys represent. Forks is here often. That's awesome. Uh, if we haven't had a chance um, to meet yet, uh, my name is Houston. I am one of the co-founders of Character Strong. And uh, back when we started building this purposeful people thing, um, it was my project, my rock, my baby. So I always love sharing uh, with people what we've built here, what we've pulled together and put together for schools, hopefully just like yours. Um, you'll notice that the chat is just set to all uh, panelists. So the Character Strong team is online, uh, ready to help answer some of your questions. Uh, so if you have any questions along the way, feel free to drop it into the chat and hopefully I'll have a little bit of time at the end to get some of those questions uh, or the team will just be answering direct to you or to everyone if they feel like it's relevant for the whole group to, to know. Uh, so super grateful that you're joining us today. Um, I am going to get us rolling. I'm going to share my screen with you all. Uh, it's going to look something like this. Google Chrome. There we go. And hopefully, that's not what I want to do to see. We're sharing something else. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Uh, so I'm just pulling up the, uh, the website here. So hopefully you can all see that pretty well. If for any reason you're having trouble seeing that, just drop into the chat. And uh, hopefully the team can show you how to navigate to the right spot. Um, but this is the back end. This is the website. This is what the curriculum itself looks like. And before I dig too deep into what we have here, uh, I just want to walk you through a little bit of the thought process of how and why we pulled this thing together. Uh, people are saying it's very blurry. So we're going to see if we can fix that. Thanks for letting me know. Zoom, I'll tell you what, Zoom is sometimes our best friend and sometimes our very worst enemy. How about this? Drop in the chat if you're able to see that a little bit better. Open. Much better. That's good. Okay, cool. Uh, all clear. Moving forward. Forging, for, forging ahead. Uh, forging ahead. We're not foraging for food yet. Um, all right. So this is the, the back end. This is the curriculum site. Um, and a couple of things that we've learned as we've been building tools to support schools, uh, talk about social emotional learning and character development uh, at all grade levels. One of the first things that we learned about specifically the elementary content 
is that we wanted to build it to be mutually adaptive. So instead of a prescriptive curriculum where it's like you have to do this this time every week, uh, what we learned at the elementary level is actually educators prefer, prefer the mutually adaptive model, which gives you as the teacher in the classroom or you as the educator in the building, a lot more autonomy on how it's delivered. So you get to choose when and where and how it is implemented. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about implementation later. So it's designed with a toolkit model, tons and tons of content that's really easy to find. So you can implement it um, in a lot of different areas, depending on what you need. We have everything in here from like a 30 second brain break to full on 30 minute uh, in depth uh, activity based experiences. Um, the th other thing that we learned about building this was that we wanted to make sure that we approached it really holistically. So we know that just a 30 minute a week uh, push in model um, is one way to go about things, but it is not sort of that holistic, sustainable change. And we know that if we're truly going to make culture change, we need to get all stakeholders involved. So one of our favorite lines from Dr. Clayton Cook, who we work closely with at the University of Minnesota, he says, when it comes to school culture change, we are first and foremost in the business of adult behavior change. So don't worry, we'll get to that in a little while too. We have all kinds of tools for families and for staff in the building to be role modeling the work. The third thing before I actually share some of the content uh, with you is uh, that we intentionally designed this to be very distinct from our secondary content. So I even saw someone dropping in the chat, do you have content at the secondary level? Yes, in fact, we started at the secondary level uh, because we know sometimes that like grades six through 12 can be really hard to create engaging and relevant content for. So we wanted to start at that level to see if we could forge ahead with like the really tough challenge first of how do you get high school kids to buy into things like kindness or respect. And then that content was going so well that we wanted to work backwards and create content at the elementary level also. And what we learned was this, um, that if you call the elementary content the same thing as your secondary content uh, and we'd seen this from other districts from other feedback we received um, from people who were trying to implement k-12 or pre-k through 12 sel or character content they said kids would go elementary to middle school and they'd say oh i've already done this right because if it's called the same thing uh then i think our naturally naturally our brains say oh i've already been through this i already know what it means to be blank uh, and so we intentionally, it's all created by Character Strong, but our elementary curriculum, it looks different, it sounds different. We talk about mostly different traits. Uh, it's branded entirely different because we wanted to make sure that you um, didn't uh, get that sort of complaint, right? That natural silly barrier uh, when kids get into middle school or high school of I've already done this or this is too elementary for me. Uh, so let's dig into how the content uh, was actually built, was actually created. Uh, the way it works um, is we've created content for the classroom, for home, for staff, and for the playground. Uh, and our classroom content is what I would say is the most robust, uh, meaning there's a lot of different ways to approach the classroom level content. Uh, we break it down into what we call our serve model. So you'll notice that the toolkit uh, has 10 different traits that we focus on on the menu here. And as you look through all these different traits, you'll see um, a good mix of social emotional learning skills and character skills. So we talk a lot about how do we bring those two things together because they need to work hand in hand. How does a social emotional skill of empathy work alongside a character trait like kindness? those two things work together. So how do we teach both of those things really well? Well, these 10 words, these 10 traits uh, are used, were created, they weren't just pulled from thin air. We surveyed families and uh, students and educators to say, hey, what is it that you want your students to be more of? What are the skills that you want more of at home? And for yourself as the student, what do you want uh, more of in your life? And these are the 10 words that rose to the top. Courage, respect, perseverance, gratitude, honesty, kindness, empathy, responsibility, cooperation, and creativity. 
a really strong mix of SEL, social emotional learning and character. Uh, and each of these 10 traits operates kind of like this. Check it out. So you drop down into the kindness menu and you'll notice uh, that first it's uh, divided up to be age appropriate. So let's say we wanna go into grades K through two. I teach grades K through two or I teach kindergarten. This is where I would start to look. I jump into here and there's five uh, different categories. We call this our serve model. It's easy for you. This is the way I think about it in my brain. I think about the serve model as like a color coded notebook for our noggin, right? A really simple way to break down all of our tools, all of our resources into a few easy to understand categories. For example, the S in the serve model stands for start intentionally. What are some simple ways that we can start the month with a focus on something like kindness? What are some practical ways we could start each week with a focus on kindness? What are some simple ways that we could start every day with a focus on the character trait of kindness? So you'll notice uh, some of these things have a good sort of rhythm to them, meaning that once you sort of get the hang of it, you'll see that each trait follows a similar pattern in terms of delivery. For example, at the beginning of each month, we want to start with common language. So we would introduce, of course, the definition. When we say kindness, what do we mean? What are we digging into this month? Well, we say that kindness is the choice to act with words, gifts, or actions to bring appreciation, positivity, and encouragement to ourselves and others. This is probably one of the more detailed definitions we have, but we spend a lot of time as an organization thinking about kindness and how to really integrate it thoughtfully into our schools because I think sometimes kindness gets a rep for being fluffy when we think it is anything but. If you've seen some of our interviews or conversations on the whole child summit or you're following along with the podcast, you know that I am very passionate about changing the way we think about kindness. Kindness is this, this action, this thing that we choose to do and it's uh, supported by a lot of traits that live underneath it. So we talk about the common language to start the month. There's some extension activities to dig into to make sure you sort of deepen the understanding of that definition. And then you come down here and you'll see that we start each week. We start each week with an image, an image uh, designed to inspire conversation around something like kindness. So uh, these are actually uh, every trait. We have five different illustrators from around the country who contributed to building these out. So you'll see a lot of different sort of styles. In fact, let me show you another example really quick. Uh, here is, where do we go? Uh, here is, um, for example, empathy. Okay, to start intentionally, check it out. Um, a very totally different style of illustration. Uh, these images are designed to talk about empathy. So you can kind of see right away uh, the difference between the, the artists, but also the difference between the traits. This image, you could use this to start the, the, each week um, with different images. And this one for me is one of my favorite images to talk about uh, empathy. The idea that just because you're good at one thing doesn't mean that you're good at everything and that some people have different gifts than us. Uh, what it feels like to be in someone else's shoes, especially when you're trying something that's new for you and something that they're really good at. <laughs> I love the contrast of the cheetah trying to slow down enough to do yoga with the sloth. Come back to kindness and you will see um, sort of a different set of images related to kindness. Here's one of my favorites, the giraffe coming down to the bunny's level to make sure that they are shielded um, from the rain. So you can use those to inspire some conversation. We actually also have them in black and white line drawings. So you can print them out and use them as coloring activities if you wanted to weave in some um, of that. And then you come down a little bit further and you'll notice that there are thoughtful ways uh, to start each day. So we believe in starting each day um, using a powerful quote. And then uh, that quote would last for an entire week. So let's say on Monday, you share the image. That's your way of starting the week. You have a conversation about that. Uh, in the ideal world, then you'd use the quote to kick off Tuesday. Maybe it's something like Oprah. 
sharing, extend yourself in kindness to other human beings whenever you can. And you'll notice that each of the four remaining days of the week has a different component to it. So for example, day one, you might do a little bit of vocab. Uh, so extend, what does extend mean? To hold out or make longer. Uh, day two is almost always a biography. So a little bit of a mini bio or context to who this person is. So it's not just a random name saying a random thing, but Oprah Winfrey is a media executive, actress, show host, television producer, and philanthropist. Through her extensive influence, Oprah teaches and encourages random acts of kindness to brighten people's days. Fun fact, recent fun fact in my life, I just got to meet Oprah like a few weeks ago and she was as amazing as you might imagine. In fact, we took a picture together and I accidentally held her hand for a really long time. Uh, a story for another time, but Oprah, an incredible uh, human being. And um, our goal actually with some of these start the days is to be super representative. We were hyper intentional about bringing a lot of different cultures, and backgrounds and, and perspectives forward so that these quotes were really well-rounded. For example, here's from the K through two uh, start intentionally area. Sometimes it takes only one act of kindness and caring to change a person's life. That comes from Jackie Chan, one of my total movie heroes growing up. So you can kind of see that each day has a, or each um, week has the opportunity to focus on a different quote to start the day intentionally. Number three uh, would be, uh, this would be like a Thursday in the week. This would be a question for reflection. How does kindness affect our relationships? How do you feel when you show kindness to others? And day four would be a final reflection question. What does it mean to extend yourself in kindness? Why is extending ourselves important when it comes to something like kindness? So day one, vocab, day two, bio, day three and four, reflection questions to deepen our learning around that quote. So that's start intentionally, practical ways to begin the month, the week, and the day related to the character trait. Uh, implementation looks like a lot of different things in a lot of different schools. Some schools in year one, all they do is they start with the start intentionally content to start to build out that process. And then it's really, really simple, uh, low burden, high impact, right? Five minutes at the start of each day and you're starting to integrate kindness into the daily fabric of what we do. But if you wanna go deeper, we get into engage relationally. So you're looking over here on the menu, we're still in uh, K through two. In the E is engage relationally. And we think about this as practical ways for people to engage in play with purpose. Uh, so what are some simple ways that we can have students playing, engaging, uh, learning more about each other, but also have a focus in some way on that character trait? Um, so for example, embodying kindness. It's a 20 minute activity on large sheets of butcher paper, have students help each other trace an outline of their body. Inside the silhouette, have them write or draw different ways they show kindness in the world. Or on the outside of their outline, have them draw and write ways they want to show kindness, others to show kindness to them. Adapt by using smaller sheets where students can draw an outline of their self portrait. So, uh, an idea for a practical way to do a short activity um, related to kindness. This one's a 20 minuter, but if you go down, you'll notice we also have one to 10 minuters. We wanna give lots of simple options so you can integrate this in whatever way feels right for your situation. So go down a little further. For example, um, you might have something like compliments with kindness. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Before being in this activity, practice how to give a meaningful compliment. For example, Thank you for always making me laugh. Can have more meaning when compared to, I like your shoes. Those students are gonna be giving a compliment to a different classmate each round. And then for each round, call out a way for students to travel to their classmates. Students should travel to their classmate, give a compliment to one another, and then stand next to each other until all students have found a buddy. Repeat the process using as many movements as you like. So maybe the first movement is you have to tiptoe across the room and then you have to give a really quiet compliment. Maybe you have to hop on one foot and give a really bouncy compliment. Crawl like a bear, hop like a frog. So just different styles of movement to get them opening up physically and then integrating that kindness part in at the end of the activity. So start intentionally, ways to start the month, week, day. Engage relationally, practical, purposeful ways to play. You move over to the next one. We're talking respond with empathy. 
Um, the idea behind this category, this sort of folder, color-coded notebook for your brain, um, this is about identifying and meeting students where they are at. So we know that sometimes students in your class need uh, a mindful moment, an opportunity to calm down and recenter. And sometimes students need that like brain break, that opportunity to move or shake or play. And we've incorporated a little bit of both. So you'll notice we have mindful moments. For example, kindness to myself. Ask students to close their eyes and take a slow, deep breaths. Read the following prompts out loud and have students complete the sentences inside their heads. Between each prompt, remind students to take a deep breath in and out. So as the teacher or the educator in the room, you might say, I am kind to others when I blank. And you let students fill in the blanks, have them breathe in, breathe out. One thing I like about myself is blank. I am really good at blank. Being kind makes me feel blank. And I am, I am amazing because blank. Of course, all of these activities are designed to be adaptable. So you can choose to use all those sentences or just one or two of them, but a practical way to recenter focused on uh, the trait at hand. You move down a little bit further. In fact, I saw this as a question. Do we have videos uh, related to each character trait? The answer is yes. In fact, the brain breaks section has lots of cool videos that we've curated from around the internet. You'll always see the title, how long it is, and a little mini description of what it's about. So here's a couple of different videos that you can use. Everything from Sesame Street, to some other cool um, videos that we found from around the internet. You go down a little further, if you don't wanna put something up on the screen, uh, you can always use these simple, silly uh, brain breaks as opportunities as well. For example, pencil jumps, invite students to put their pencil on the floor, ask them to jump from side to side over the pencil five times, then 10, then 15 if you want. Set a timer and make it a race against time to see who can finish in the least amount of time. And as they jump over the pencil, Encourage them to name people who've shown kindness to them or who have shown or they've shown kindness to. So again, a simple sort of energizer, but with that little tweak to make sure that you're integrating, weaving kindness into everything that we do. You go down all the way to the bottom and we have scenarios, some simple practical scenarios that you can pose to students to help them wrestle with what kindness looks like in action. For example, Timothy was playing alone at recess. He looked sad. When Jonathan asked him what was wrong, Timothy responded, I'm having a bad day. What are some ways Jonathan can show kindness towards Timothy right away? How can Jonathan continue to show a little extra kindness toward Timothy tomorrow, next week, next month? I might have even included my own name in here, which I'm just remembering. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, all right, continuing through this sort of color-coded notebook, values practiced consistently. Uh, the way it works, uh, these would be sort of more formal, long form lessons, right? Way, things that have debrief questions or discussion questions to dig in in a slightly longer model. Uh, for example, you might see this one's called the compliment chair. This one could be done over the course of a long time period, or you could sort of weave this in throughout a month. Uh, this one's called the compliment chair in this activity. Students take turns sitting in the compliment chair, which is in, placed in front of the whiteboard facing the class. You write the student's name up top. Students will either write for themselves or dictate to the teacher what they like about the student who's taking their turn. Take a picture of the child once all the compliments are written on the board behind them. Uh, so you repeat that until all the kids have had a chance to go through it. And that's some really beautiful uh, content that you can share with them or with their families. So the V section of the serve model, values practice consistently, a practical way, an activity-based way to actually teach these traits. The final one, E in the serve model stands for exit intentionally. So again, ways to exit the month, the week, and the day. So we have starters, we have enders, and we have everything in between. So at the end of the month, we return back to the definition to see what have we learned? Have we discovered anything new? What's different? Uh, you go down a little bit further, exit the week, some practical ways to sort of close out a week. Uh, for example, kindness charades, bring one or two students to the front, have students act out an act of kindness they witnessed this week. Have students guess what the act is that they're witnessing. After three guesses, have the actors recognize the person who actually showed that act of kindness during the week and have everyone give them a round of applause. 
So a slightly longer form activity that would be appropriate for like close out a week. But you also have little simple things to end a day. For example, maybe it is kindness chant. Teach the students the chant, there's love for you and for me when we all choose to live more kindly. So anything as simple as a mantra to end the day uh, to a simple activity to close out or review learning for the week, uh, this is exit intentionally. So just a little bit of an overview of how the classroom component works. And as you can see, and uh, as I've noticed people sharing in the chat box, uh, really a sort of very comprehensive uh, way to approach this. We designed it with the users in mind, built by educators and counselors and play therapists in order to um, meet your needs, whatever they are. Maybe you just simply want a five minute thing daily, or maybe you want to go all in and maybe you're trying to integrate 10, 20 minutes uh, more consistently. Whatever it is you need, uh, the toolkit is designed for you to find that stuff quickly and have you integrate it very simply. Some people are asking, well, how do I integrate this? There's a lot of stuff going on here. What would this look like for a thoughtful sort of school-wide implementation plan? Don't worry, we got you covered. You come here to the resources tab for each trait. I'm here on kindness, kindness resources. And if I were to look right here, up at the top, implementation. You can download the implementation plan and you'll see there are a few different options on how you can roll this out, depending on what your school most needs. For example, uh, flexible implementation. This would be the most flexible version where you're kind of integrating different parts of the serve model as you go. And uh, a team has done this work for you where they're, uh, they've gone through the whole toolkit to make sure that you are not repeating activities uh, from the K through two component um, with each of those grade levels. So this makes sure that from an implementation perspective, you're not double down, doubling down on any activity or image or a video. Um, not that you don't need, not that those reminders are a bad thing, but if you want to be hyper intentional, here's how you do it. This is all the flexible implementation model. You come down here, here's the short daily implementation. So if you want to sort of integrate this into all that you do, then for example, um, at the kindergarten level on Monday, the beginning of that uh, month, you would start, everyone would start by talking about the definition. Tuesday, you would do the engage relationally activity, critter kindness. Wednesday, you do the mindful moment activity, belly breathing. Thursday, the compliment chair. And Friday, exit the week. So this makes sure that you're integrating something every day and never repeating grades K through five, any of the activities that you do. So you can see week two, week three, week four, all those are pre-built for you, um, unless you wanted to customize it on your own. But a thoughtful team down in Missouri put this together to make sure that uh, you have those implementation plans ready for you. The last option for implementation is the one lesson per week model. So this is a 20 to 30 minutes uh, per week delivered over time. So for example, week one at the kindergarten level, these are the three things that you would do that week um, to integrate this on a weekly model. And then this is built for kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, so that you never repeat. Uh, and then there's also supplementary materials if you wanted to integrate other things in. So all this is ready to rock for you um, if you didn't want to go through the work of customizing it on your own. That said, it is a toolkit, so choose your own adventure. And if you see something that works better for you, totally do that. In fact, here's another example of a school that did exactly that. They took uh, all of the content, they built it into this example calendar, and they've linked everything for their staff. So they said cycle one. This is the time frame that cycle one includes. They've gone in here. They've linked the parent letter, which I'll talk about in a minute. They've linked uh, directly to defining empathy. What is empathy? So um, we have schools who are doing this work on their own because they know that skin in the game is important and they know what works best for them. So it's designed to suit whatever need uh, is for you, knowing that social emotional learning and character development sometimes is a customized approach. We all have different needs on what we know is gonna best support our kids. On that implementation page, you'll also find some assessments. We built pre-assessments and post-assessments uh, that you can use at the beginning and the end of each month 
that give you just a little bit of data around how your students are wrestling with these traits. Uh, and you go all the way to the bottom here, you'll find alignments. All of our content is aligned to the ASCA standards, those counseling standards, as well as uh, the CASEL standards, the core five CASEL competencies. We have done the work to make sure that you can show to your school, your district, that all of these things are CASEL and ASCA aligned. All the way at the bottom, you can download the posters all in one place. You can download the illustrations all in one place. So it's just one click for you to integrate, uh, project, to print out, whatever works best for you. I'm gonna show you a couple of the things and hopefully get to a few questions here. Uh, let me share with you. All the way over here, we are looking at kindness, K through two, home. So I'm gonna pull this up. Uh, we believe in providing tools for families to do this work at home. So you'll notice that uh, for each of these traits, you'll find uh, sort of um, developmentally appropriate letters home that include an explanation of what we're talking about in the classroom, some conversation starters to get you as a family thinking more about what it is that we're talking about, kindness for example, questions you could ask uh, your children about what they're thinking about about kindness. Uh, there's books that you can uh, link to that are linked here for you that families could read together. Um, there's some personal reading <laughs> for uh, families that want to do this work on their own, their own development as parents or grandparents or guardians. Uh, this is for their reading, so this would be for parents specifically. And then there are weekly family challenges to put you into action uh, at home, to put you as a mom or a dad or a grandma or aunt or an uncle into action in your child's life so that you can role model what that trait is. Uh, someone just asked, do those parent letters also come in Spanish? Yes, they do. You can download the letter home both in English uh, and in Spanish. Let me show you what one of them looks like just so you can kind of get a sense. Let's see, right here. So this is what a letter home looks like. We made sure to make it really um, concise. So none of these are ever more than two pages long, which means you could print them and send them home or send them directly as a PDF in the PDF format. All of these books are linked. All of these articles are linked so they can quickly and easily access those things. But this is an example of the family letter home. You can see it has all of the things, sort of um, information on page one, and then those challenges, those four family challenges are on page two. So that's the home component. We have home letters home for uh, K2 and for 3.5. And if I'm moving over just a little bit further, I get to the staff component. Uh, we believe, as I mentioned earlier, that adults need to be role modeling this work uh, in our buildings. As educators, we have to show people what it looks like to put our character into action. So for each of the traits, you have four staff challenges. So they're weekly practices that you could engage in as educators in the building to role model what it looks like. Uh, here's some examples. Be kind uh, to your selfie. Uh, we simply cannot serve from an empty vessel. So this purposeful pursuit invites you to take a selfie of you being kind to you. Need a massage? Take a picture of yourself entering the door to your favorite spa. Offer Manny Petty, show us your beautiful nails. Just need some nature for a few minutes? More relevant during our current reality? Take your picture with some forest or some flowers. Smile, you're on the self-care cam. As a bonus, consider posting these on a visual display, maybe in a staff lounge or in a virtual lounge um, to model self-care for your students, staff, and stakeholders. So a practical way for you to role model kindness starting with yourself. Uh, and the final couple of components to share with you here. Um, uh, here's a cool thing that a school did. They took all of those purposeful pursuits and they put them into one place so that their staff could copy and paste or print them out. I love watching schools customize this for their people. Um, a few other quick things to share, then I'm gonna answer some questions. Uh, we also have uh, these traits live on the playground. Uh, we know that sometimes the biggest behavioral issues we see are gonna be on that playground, so we've created some practical tools for you to engage in kindness 
um, out at recess. So we have, for example, a kindness scavenger hunt. And to make it even easier on you, we've built out a printable sheet if you wanted to use this with your students. And you could give students uh, the kindness scavenger hunt. Look for someone who is playing with something that you've never tried before. Ask if you can join. Try to spot someone who is alone at recess. Ask them if they can join, want to join you. Look for someone who you don't know very well. Walk and talk with them. See if you can figure out five things you have in common. So you can see sort of the kindness scavenger hunt is designed to put people into action on the playground performing acts of kindness. And you could use some sort of reward system with that to let students know that you recognize and see the effort that they're making to make a selflessness scavenger hunt work. Final tool uh, that I wanna share with you is our reading list. We have um, books that are uh, developmentally appropriate linked here with little summaries. We know that this is a gold mine for many educators, that this is one of the best and most practical ways to integrate this into your classroom is by reading aloud uh, to your students. Um, and so all of those are woven in right here. And anytime you click the link, it'll take you to the purchase page. Uh, this top one, what does it mean to be kind, is by my friend Raina, who uh, I actually am working on a children's book with her right now, which is pretty excited. She, uh, there's over a million copies of what does it mean to be kind in the world. She's an incredible author. So we love showcasing uh, people just like her uh, with practical books that you can use in your classroom. Okay, final thought that I'm really excited to share with you uh, is we have a new thing coming live to you. Um, if you're already a Purposeful People user, this will automatically get added to your uh, curriculum. Uh, and if not, then here is a notice to you. Uh, we heard people wanted more pre-K content. So we've gone ahead and started to build a custom set of pre-K tools uh, if your campuses find that to be useful. So for all 10 of our traits, uh, we have pre-K starters. Um, sort of like the other ones, but here's one of my favorites. Uh, for example, think, uh, where is it? What's a fun one? Oh, here we go. Thankful thoughts. Start the day by giving students an opportunity to show you what they're thankful for. Students will stand in a circle and the teacher stands in the middle. The teacher will say something they might be thankful for followed by emotion. For example, if you're thankful for your family, touch your head. If you're thankful for your school, touch your toes. Give students a chance to be a leader in the circle as well. So some simple starters. This one's a focus on gratitude. There's activities related to gratitude at that little level. Um, for example, one of my favorites is the grateful compass. Have students all face a certain direction in class then ask students to find things they see in that direction that they are grateful for. Then as a class, turn to another corner. Do this for all four corners of the room so students get to look around the classroom and think of things they're grateful for as they face those different directions. If you're feeling extra directional, share with them that they are talking about North gratitude items, East gratitude items, so on and so forth. And finally, there are closers, simple ways to end the week or the day. Again, this is all our new pre-K content. Here's one of my favorites. At the end of the day, tell students that you are thinking about something you are grateful for. Have them guess what you are grateful for and tell them if they are right or not. You can use hot or cold to get them closer. Try to guess what they are grateful for on some days too. So we're building that. That'll be live for this coming school year, pre-K content developed uh, just for you. I'm gonna hop over to the question sheet because I know I've seen lots of them coming in and I wanna see if I can answer as many as I can. Thank you all for being here. Um, if you do have to hop off early at all, I do wanna leave you with a couple of quick other fun notices. Uh, for example, um, if you for some reason haven't seen what we're up to with the whole child summit. Uh, we've, it's 30 speakers, over 12 and a half hours of free professional development, incredible authors and people sharing their insights into doing this work well. Um, it's just wholechildvirtualsummit.com. Um, so please check that out. That goes through the rest of this week. Uh, and the other thing just to know, because it is fun and new for us, we're doing our first ever merch drop right now. So if you go to our Shopify, you'll notice uh, we have Purposeful People stickers, which are super fun. And then down here, limited time only, uh, just until early next week, you can order the new Be Kind, Be is Greater Than Do, there's Kind on My Mind hats, and Make Time, Be Kind shirts, all kinds of things um, to check out there. That being said, 
let's hop back to those questions and see if I can answer as many as I can. Um, how can we use these activities remotely since we are out of the classroom right now? By chance, are there any webinars that you're presenting on remote learning? Great question and obviously hyper relevant right now. Um, so many of our um, activities are easily adaptable to do virtually. Um, there's some simple check-in questions uh, that you can use. There's videos. Those videos are great things to send out. Uh, and if you haven't even checked it out yet, characterstrong.com slash free resources, uh, you'll notice that we're actually providing um, a bunch of free things that you can do um, that are elementary focused. So um, if I'm looking at the curriculum site here, uh, if you go down to virtual educator resources, this section right here is totally free. If you go to elementary, we've actually pulled a lot of our videos out of our curriculum, put it right in here, and included debrief questions with them. So if you wanted free practical ways to integrate some of this content right now, um, we've provided that, um, knowing that there's a lot more inside of the curriculum, of course. Uh, that being said, uh, we also do host, and I'll pull it up right now for you, we do host uh, virtual school culture trainings. Uh, we just hosted one last week um, with uh, about 500 educators live from all around the world. We had educators coming in from Colombia, from Texas, from Wisconsin, from New York, uh, and we talk in this training about building a thoughtful school culture and we talk and provide and role model a lot of ways to integrate uh, SEL and character into virtual learning. So if you're interested in something like that, tickets to that are only $49 a person. Uh, and those have been super fun for John and I to host together and share some of the things we're seeing work to integrate and weave relationships into digital learning. Uh, are the visuals changed out each year or do they stay the same? I'm wondering if we begin the student and a kindergarten would see the same image lessons three years in a row. Great question. Uh, a couple of ways to answer that. The first one is um, the implementation plans would make sure that um, students, depending on the implementation plan you choose, you could make sure that students would never be exposed to um, an image more than one time. Thought two uh, is we believe it's actually a fun exercise to come back to images um, for three years and see how students see them differently. Um, I think that's a great exercise in learning in repetition and seeing how kids change. Part three, one of our ongoing commitments is to continue to add tools and resources there. Um, images will be one of those things that we continue to add. So um, yes, they can see the same thing for three years if you want them to, um, but no, they don't have to um, if you follow some of the implementation plans. Uh, is this only in English? I'm a dual language school. Next question. Uh, great question. We have our, um, our letters home are translated uh, into Spanish to make that more accessible um, for those families coming from a different background. Uh, are the webinars on the Character Strong website on how to use remotely, we use Purposeful People, but I'm struggling with how to use it remotely. That's a great question and a great prompt um, and something that we can actually work on building out for our users. Um, so there's nothing presently with how to use Purposeful People remotely right now um, besides those free resources I just pointed you to. Um, but one of those things that we will work as a team on the back end will be to build out a webinar um, for using whether it's our secondary or our elementary content remotely. Great question. I was under the impression that we were supposed to get through one cycle of serve in a week and do that four times in a month until the topic was covered. Is that what you suggest or is it more open than that? Um, it is definitely more open than that, depending on the implementation plan you want to use. Um, I like that model that you can get through one cycle of serve a week. Uh, that way it's an easy sort of structure. It's five letters, five days in the week, um, but does not have to be how you do it. If that's how your school is implementing. I think it's cool to have a collective shared vision to make sure you're all on the same page. Um, but that said, there is lots of ways to implement and very intentionally so. Um, as a school counselor, I've used the implementation plan to help teachers know what to do every day. Teachers just pick and choose and do not use the implementation plan. Are they going to run into things they have already seen and done the previous year, like moving from first to second grade? Great question. I would say that is a, um, an implementation challenge 
And actually one of the things that we talk about in this training um, is building a team for effective implementation. We talk a lot about effective research backed implementation um, and how to do that thoughtfully and well. So I um, would love to have you one of those days. Um, I think that it is important if you are gonna start sending those implementation plans out um, to make that really clear as we saw some other um, campuses do for their people. And in some situations it looks, uh, if I can find it, where'd it go? Here's the example calendar, right? Like using something like this um, or building something like this makes it super accessible for your educators uh, to jump in. So you take all the guesswork out. Um, and then that being said, I am still a big advocate that doing an activity in first grade with one teacher and at my first grade brain could and probably will feel totally different than doing that same activity the next year with a totally different teacher and my brain developing a lot. So um, I don't think there's harm in having students repeat and I don't think the number of things that they would repeat would be too many uh, to worry. And if that is a concern, then thinking through that implementation plan uh, is gonna be important for fidelity. Uh, can you share how to support students opting out? Consent is embedded in Character Strong ideas with K through five. Uh, really good question. I think this came in from Regina. Um, yeah, we believe deeply that uh, all of the things that we do around social emotional learning is challenged by choice. Uh, and so we frame it, we talk about framing it as none of this stuff is required, but I think when we present with students a really strong why of why this work is important, then their willingness to show up and do the how or the what uh, increases a lot. So baking consent into that conversation of saying, we want you to participate if you want to participate um, and not allowing students to totally excuse themselves, right? Still having to uh, at least watch or take note, or still be a part of the conversation, even if they're not doing the thing, I think is um, a really important frame. Thank you, Regina. Um, how often are the activities and resources updated? Uh, we try to go through an annual audit of um, most all of our curricula. So we're always looking for ways to improve and strengthen. An example this year would be adding of the pre-K tools and that'll get added into the toolkit totally free. Um, we're always adding new books to the list. Uh, and right now we're going through an equity audit to make sure our work continues to be culturally responsive uh, with one of our friends and partners, Aaron Jones. So coming into this next school year, you'll see some edits uh, on our work to make sure that um, we're being thoughtful and intentional in how we do that, as well as added activities for pre-K. So it is updated, I would say, uh, once a year and ongoing. We're always adding small things along the way. Is there any good order to teach the traits? Great question. Um, we think we built it to be 10 traits very intentionally, so it was more of a menu and less of a prescriptive thing. Meaning um, if your school already has five pillars or five values or seven things that you stand by, uh, we tried to create a good cross section of the most commonly used traits so that you could pull from depending on what you need. So some schools, if you only have five or six traits that you quote unquote stand by or live by, pull those six from the toolkit and use those as you see fit. Um, otherwise, it is very much choose your own adventure. Uh, we have them in the order that um, we sort of like or uh, on the side on, in, built in our curriculum, but um, schools use them in a lot of different ways depending on their need, right? Maybe you say, hey, kindness and October go together because October has National Kindness Day or World Kindness Day. So we want to make sure to do kindness during that month. Um, then the toolkit is designed to be super flexible like that. Um, can those be shared? Some of the other things that schools created? Uh, yes, we can request with our schools uh, that have shared these things with us uh, if they'd be willing to let other schools duplicate them as well. And uh, when we send out a follow-up, we'll try to include a couple of links to make your life easier, I hope. Uh, is there a link to access all the printables? Yeah, when you have the curriculum, when you've purchased a license to the curriculum, um, you can find on the resource page of each of the traits. Um, if you come over here, for example, we have our resources page. If you come down to the bottom, um, all the printables are linked right here. So you can just click and download those really simply. Um, Kathy 
says, thanks, Character Strong staff. I always thought I was a pretty kind person, but because of you, I will be a better human after all this is over. Oh boy, lots of pressure. Can't wait to get my students back and continue to build meaningful relationships. Uh, thank you, Kathy. That means a lot. Uh, and the final question I'm seeing here is, what are the 10 traits? So in case you missed that earlier, the 10 traits uh, right on the side here are courage, respect, perseverance, gratitude, honesty, kindness, empathy, responsibility, cooperation, and creativity. Those are the 10 traits that we operate from. And by the way, at any point, if you want to check out um, a bit more, in fact, I just talked through um, a bunch of kindness. You go up here to characterstrong.com, free samples, hit elementary sample, and you will get an entire month with all of the content included. Uh, letters home, staff challenges, playground stuff, K2, 3.5, you'll get all of that included. If you just go to the website, request some samples, uh, and you will get all that information right away. Hope you all uh, enjoyed this little bit of an overview. I always love sharing uh, what we have put together. Uh, this was a huge labor of love across a lot of different passionate educators, counselors, play therapists, uh, and myself, illustrators, designers, came together to build this. Um, and we tried to use all the things that we've learned uh, about making this content engaging and relevant to support the work you're doing every day. Uh, so please make today a purposeful one, um, and we hope to support your schools very soon. Uh, for more information about what we're up to, please just drop us a note. It's info at characterstrong.com. We're happy to help. Some people are sharing any advice on how to get my district to purchase this. <laughs> we hop on calls all the time. In fact, the team will drop a link right now uh, to John's calendar. John is my co-founder, um, and he's on calls all the time with district uh, people, with principals, answering questions, um, and sharing how to bring this work to your district uh, right away. We believe deeply that we cannot wait on our kids, that we believe deeply that SEL and character is the plate upon which we build and do everything else. Uh, this relational work is more critical than ever, and we want to be there to support you. So let's get this moving, let's get rolling, and we want to support you as soon as possible. Thanks for showing up today. Happy Tuesday. Make it a great day. And we look forward to supporting and working with your schools very, very soon. If you haven't yet, make sure you're following along with the Whole Child Virtual Summit. Some really good stuff going on there. And if you're feeling really excited, drop in and get some purposeful merch starting today. Love you all very much. Uh, have a beautiful one and thanks for tuning in.